it's Dave Dale from Small Town Times. I'm here at the Nova Art Gallery at 176 Lakeshore Drive, and it is a different kind of art show. Opening reception this Saturday, June 17th, uh, Janet Hendershot, her work's right there, and Cesar Ferraro, his work's right here, and they do uh, their interpretations of the Tarot card series. There's about 22 paintings matching, of both of them doing their uh, uh, interpretations. Uh, it's pretty wild. It's, it's a, it's a must-see. Hear it from themselves in this Zoom interview. Have a good day, and if I don't see you at the reception Saturday, it's up for most of the summer. I've been painting for more than 45 years uh, professionally, and I got interested in the tarot about 30 years ago. And then I kind of felt that I, I needed to enrich my abstract work. So I decided to go back to the tarot and do a series of abstract paintings based on the cards and the information about the cards. What do you uh, enjoy about the tarot? I see it as actually a pathway to enlightenment. I, I know a lot of people use it for um, uh, fortune telling but I see it more as a uh, instruction more about how to live and and move forward with one's uh, spiritual life. Oh, that's very interesting. How how has that worked for you? Can you give me an example or uh, um... well, the um the devil is maybe the easiest to give the example of because it's got two figures with chains around their necks, and it's like realizing and they're loose hanging chains and so realizing lifting that off is um a first step really one of the first steps in in awakening and that you realize that a lot of the bondages that one imagines uh can just be slipped off so our, our own fear kind of uh entangles us in a bit of a web there right so yeah our own fear and our own um mental habits Whatever our mental habitual patterns of thinking are. Yeah. World. I renamed all the cards. So this is, this one, uh, the world is really about cosmic consciousness. So I've renamed this one cosmic consciousness. Oh. Um, you can't quite see the whole thing. You can almost see it all. Yeah, moody colors there. Yeah, I guess that one is. Yeah. I, I like the sense of the space that's created up here with the the uh, oranges and pinks. Hmm. And how many pieces are you going to have up here in your show? Uh, there are 22, and I've got all 22 paintings, uh, the ones that left the collection I've actually done. So this is Cosmic Consciousness number two, for example. Um, and then I've got um, 22 smaller, four four inch by four inch uh, drawings that have, um, they're framed about eight by 11 because they've got the, the writing and the notes above them that I made while I was reading about the card. So they're kind of a documentary documentation of the process. Different from my, my approach to the title cards, different from what Janet was saying is that I do not believe that there is any kind of uh, interpretation. I don't believe in the tarot cards. Like, you know, most people do it and go and approach the tarot thinking that there is some kind of a magical adivination or something that they can read and predict your future, predict something about your life. Um, I approach the cards entirely from the point of view as a symbology. I think the, the symbols that are embedded into the each one of the cards are absolutely beautiful. Uh, there is any information when I was doing all this. I, I did have a friend that when I was in Colombia that she was totally into the tarot cards and that's probably how I got to know a lot about the cards and understanding them. Uh, is that uh, later on, I, what I found out, I don't know if this is truth or not, information that you find in the internet that you don't, you cannot believe in it. Uh, it is that the tarot cards were used in the Middle Ages as a mean of communication. Because when two people know the tarot card and know what are supposed to be the symbols inside there, 
you can send one of the cards as a drawing to another person or, a, or just a painting or a, a, a graphic. And whatever you change, the other person is able to identify that information. So imagine in the Middle Ages, when people were put on the stick for anything that you were saying, there was another way of saying it without compromising yourself or compromising your life. It was just by sending a message that it was implied through graphics or through images. So that's what I'm more interested. I, I find them absolutely complex messages. And I wrote a poem about this project that is called Messages, Notes, Dreams, Desires, Hopes and Wishes, hoping that people always have this fantasy that we are going to be able to find something very special. But for me, is the message really what it is behind? What is that we are telling the other person when we when we are saying this card? And that's probably what happened when somebody's doing a tarot reading, no? They just want to find a message, uh, an idea of hope to something very, to and, and a way of enlightenment. There is a sentence that I really like from a poet, a singer in Latin America. Uh, he said, uh, caminante no hay camino, se hace el camino al andar. He says, a walker, you don't, there is not a path. You make your path as you walk through. And that's what I believe. That's what I, that I am totally into. So if there is somebody approaching the cards, it's more like, as we walk, we find messages, find clues, and those clues give us direction to which path that we can take. I don't think there is an adivination or anything uh, any, anything completely special that can tell me what is going to be my future. I build my future. Hmm. What's your favorite card, Cesar? Well, you know, it's difficult because there are several. I can, uh, the one that, the, the one that they put in the, in, the, in the invite, the sun. The sun is very easy to predict. We know that the source of life in many things in 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 our planet it comes from the light from of the sun and the movement of the planet versus the moon that creates the pressure on on our planet it give us the possibility to have day and night we have the day and night with the movement of the planet but we associate the light and the sun with life so that's the message and if you see the card for example is uh, is this it has the sun flower which i did it kind of we know the, the the what it is going on in this moment in the world with the war, and the sunflower is a symbol of Ukraine. No, so uh, for me it was very strategically that I made gold and blue, which are the colors of Ukraine. Hmm. Nice, very nice. How about you, Janet? What what would be your favorite, your favorite card? I think my favorite card is the High Priestess. I I love the the stream that flows from um, through her card. That I think it starts with the Magician. It flows through her card and it goes through the the Empress and the Emperor. So I love the blue stream that's going through. And she sits in front of um, um she's got pillars on both sides of her, and she sits in in what they're they're black and white. So it's the opposites. And then she she sits in front of a, a veil that's got pomegranates on it with all the seeds. And she's like the symbol of kind of um, giving and fertility, but not realization yet. I just think she's absolutely beautiful. I, lo I love what she represents. The youth of possibility, I guess you'd call her. <laughs> the, youth, the youth of female possibility as well. Are, are there cards that you like least, Janet? <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> well, I really, I really had to struggle with death. And I finally just went, okay, death is about change. And so the painting of death is very dark with some light areas in it. But the, the drawing that I did is... Um, almost a spring-like scene with bright red and bright blue and bright greens in it. You know, I just, uh, I think that's the one I struggled with the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how about you, Cesar? Are there any? No, for me, it was like a, the dead. I made it like a, almost like a symbol 
that it was victorious, like something yeah. that has to be, has to be like it, it was cool because I presented this uh, these paintings in the Truth Gym Gallery, and you know that there are all bodybuilders there and in a gym, and they all wanted to see like if they could put this as a tattoo in their body, and I love that. Is for me is I have a skeleton that doesn't look defeated or dead. It's more like a skeleton that is a warrior that is going through the path. And he is riding a horse of flames. But for me, the flame is, I don't know, like in, in my, I remember my grandma always putting candles as a, as a, as a way of enlightenment and, and a message of hope in the family. When um, candles have a, this idea that is, is the light, no? is the, the charm of something special. Uh, so for me, fire is not destruction. For me, fire is reconstruction. Like we saw it here, that we, when there is fire in the forest, what it comes after the fire is that that area gets really fertile. And the blueberries two years later are just like the best blueberries ever. So then for me, that card represents that second round, second option. Are, are we going to see the same cards, but different interpretations by both of you in, in some we cases? Did, that's what we did last time when we did. Uh, I, I am doing this project that we call it Tertullius. And we invi I invited Janet to talk about the cards. And what we did is we put one next to the other one, the two interpretations no, of the same idea. And uh, yeah. Is I think that we could do, or, or maybe on one wall and the front, and we pair them. The cards, the the cards in this moment, the the major arcana, are twenty two cards that starts from zero. And zero is actually a pretty important card because it's mm -hmm. the is the numbness. It's like it's is the fool, it, and the fool is actually a person like when you imagine almost like a teenager or a kid that is growing and is full of energy, and they are willing to take the path and take the risk to jump out of a cliff, no predicting what is going to happen. It, 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 because they have all the energy and the vitality to just go for it. So my fool, for example, is a fool with, with winds. So it's, I don't know how Janet interpreted the zero, but the zero is that, no, like nonness, but at the same time, everything is there. And I did a completely abstract with movement up and down. I mean, the youth is, he's right at the edge of a cliff and it's like, I think he's going to jump off. He might step off or he might not. Um, and so that became a, a very, very abstract movement for me of uh, almost stripes going up and down the canvas. I really enjoy talking with people and hearing what they've got to say. And I think that the fact that Cesar having and I are having this show together. I mean, you can hear in our speaking how different our approaches are and our understanding and, and what we are working with when we were doing the, the images, like so different. And yet we really enjoy talking with each other. We enjoy each other's company. Uh, I think we respect each other in our work. So, I mean, there's so much uh, kind of openness, I think. In, uh, in both Cesar and myself, that we'll probably have some pretty interesting conversations with people. Um, I would hope so. I'm also going to bring a couple of other tarots that have been made from other artists. We are going to leave them there. One is from an artist from the, from the USA, uh, Glenn Rogers, and she built the complete set. And I'm going to bring it there. It's very beautiful. It, her, her approach is completely different. She's a, a person who does a lot of meditation and uh, they, she thinks that the pieces are kind of similar to Janet, a way for enlightenment, but they are connected to certain specific type of experiences of inviting you to do a, a, a process of meditation. Um, and the other artist is Maniche Ali. She is from Pakistan and she made up a, a, the, the pieces and her pieces are... Uh, um, a message went during the COVID time and it was that this situation was going to pass through and the new life of the world, it was going to be a different world after post-COVID. 
And that was very interesting. It's, it's a different, so she created, she didn't even follow the 22 major arcana. She just made 22 new stories. So there have been a lot of different uh, approaches and ways to work with the tarot. When I was in New Orleans, there was a, a shop that had a, I don't know, it must have been at least four feet by, no, it was bigger than that. Let's say at least six feet by six feet. Case, glass case, filled with different packs of tarot. And it's quite interesting. There's a Jungian interpretation, I know that. So many, many different schools have interpreted the tarot. Just got a note from uh, Dermot that uh, Stephanie Vanderweird, Vandelweird? Yeah, Vandelweird. Yeah. Vandelweird? Yeah. So Stephanie Vandelweird is going to be doing her tarot booth uh, uh, at the opening. So there will be an even further. Yay! Yeah. So, Wonderful. Uh, so that's confirmed. So June 17th uh, is going to be a fun time for everybody interested in your, your artwork. I've created 22 very short, maximum three-sentence meditations to go with each card, but I haven't figured out yet whether it's going to be a book, whether it's going to be a deck of cards, whether I'm going to use the drawings or the paintings or both, so that's a little bit, it's still up in the air. You know what I do like to do when when I, when I have done the card and I have done I sp spoken about them, I go through them. But sometimes people quietly, they come and they said, I, I asked them, which one is your favorite card? Which one is the one that says something to you? And they always, people said, this one connects me. I don't know why. And I tell them what, what, what the card is about, what the characters are. And they all walk with kind of a feeling that there's a message for them. And I think that's fascinating. Because for somehow, I find that, that that's, that's a very important relation. It's like, how, why do we know that I like this artwork, we, we, it's very difficult to know why. We, we just like it, we saw it, we see it, we have knowledge about art, but there are certain pieces that even if we don't like them, we find them absolutely fascinating, the, what it is the message behind, you see? So the same thing here, what is, what is that? Is there a message really for you? Do you, do you think there is a divination message behind it? Yeah, maybe, why not? I just want people to come. They they need to see it and experience it. It's it's very difficult to get and gasp the whole experience unless you are there, unless you really see what the cards are about. Uh, it happens with all the artworks in general, uh, but the, there's a lot in this card. There's a lot of things to look at it. They are very meticulous process in both in in Janet's pieces and my and my own. So. I think people need to go and see them and find which one is the car for them. Which one has something that is interesting for them?